uh, Samsara, um, which is a a film about uh, death and the afterlife in, a, in the simplest way possible. Um, it it basically is two things. Um, it's first of all, it's absolutely extraordinary uh, visually, formally. Um, also, it has issues. It has problems. Uh, the film stylistically. Uh, atmospherically feels very akin to to Pichpong, very ethical. Um, it's got has a Laotian setting, so Laos um, of monks and jungle and elephants and waterfalls in a way that feels very, very uh, very ethical, very mm-hmm. um, But it also has this amazing. So it really explores like the de- this young boy who is looking after an elderly woman who die passes away, and he's reading this Tibetan book of of uh, Buddhist um, afterlife mourning thing. It's this you read this book to someone before they die, and it helps them navigate uh, the afterlife and to be reborn. Um, so again, there's this middle section which I'll talk about in a second. And then there's a final section which is it, it implies it's her rebirth as, a, mm-hmm. as another animal in a, in in Mali, I believe. The final section fell very flat for me, but the middle section is an absolute heater. It is a about 20 minute long, intense, rhythmic flicker film in the kind of tradition of Kubelka or Tony Conrad. Um, and also brackage to an extent because it uses color in a way that Conrad and uh, um, Kubelka didn't use black and white. Mm-hmm. Um, it uses, it's shot on film, it's shot on celluloid, and you get this pushing in of the celluloid. You know, I was wondering in the, fir- in the first part of the film, is the film really essential? It's adding nice grain, but mm-hmm. it really comes through in a little bit because that kind of insane light flare and bokeh and disruption that you get on the, on the screen can only be achieved by, mm-hmm. uh, you know, subjecting intense light than variable light to film celluloid mm-hmm. so it could only be achieved by that it's a film where the use of film was absolutely essential and necessary to its effect mm-hmm. there's also an amazing like three four five minute section in the middle where you hear it's black leader so just black screen mm-hmm. and you hear just the buzzing of flies uh, and it's such a bold thing to sit in a cinema where you know you see these kind of myopic uh emily atf middle of the road art, art house films that don't really take any uh bold and brave formal gestures and you sit there and you're in a darkened cinema listening to flies buzzing for five minutes it's absolutely incredible um the final like i said the final section of the film this kind of rebirth was a bit it spoiled it for me i really feel the film could have ended mm-hmm. very quickly with just like a, an animal being birthed or something and then that's your film it would have been obviously a lot shorter mm-hmm. um but yeah it's 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 an uh, astonishing thing um i felt really knocked sideways actually after um after walking out of that cinema and I, I haven't been surprised by images in that way this whole festival um, so yeah, it was a it was a, a kind of a lucky pick. Basically, I just saw it in a list and decided to go for it. That's terrific. And we and there we were thinking you were going to see Samsara by Ron Frick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. A ridiculous. Uh, sub Jeffrey Rogier. 